this is training, if you like, of, of how you've lived and how, how, how you've lived. Well, I'm Jim Nelson. My father was John Nelson. His father was John William Nelson. And his grandfather, my great-grandfather, was Titus Nelson, who came here from Connolly in 1847. Why did he come? Titus Nelson was one of four boys there were four boys and four girls a family belonging to another Daniel Nelson in Connolly and family of shoemakers now I can well imagine that there wasn't sufficient room in Connolly for short for shoemakers so why, why come to settle? Mm. Well, in those days, settle because of the turnpike road which had been built from uh, Leeds to Kendall, that crossed over the old main road in settle which went east to west. The east to west road was built by the Romans. The Roman road from York to Lancaster. And so this crossroads was virtually in the middle of the Pennines and became quite an important place. There was a market in Settle. The market charter goes back to 1249 when Leeds was a village, Bradford was a village, Sheffield was a village, and their county rate, all put together, was only slightly more than the county rate for Settle, which was then a market town. Those days, the markets wasn't full of haberdashery and all sorts of odds and ends. It was a farmer's market, a tradesman's market. And there were market fairs. Set days, there was a goose fair, a horse fair, sheep fairs, and there was a leather fair. Now you may say, why leather? Well, within a couple of miles, there were five tanneries in Settle. There was this leather industry. The 18th and 19th of August every year was leather fair. Now the tanners would meet at the Talbot Hotel. It's Talbot Hotel, still a local pub. Uh, and that's where they would have their guild meetings and decide the price of hides and leathers and so forth. Especially for leather fair. The town fathers of that day fixed market tolls. Everything being bought and sold in the market paid a toll. The present day stallholders pay so much for a stall. A bale of leather, 6p, that's 6 old p, and, and so forth. There was a scale of charges for green hides. Butchers brought their hides in to, to sell to the, the tanners and so forth. And all this was tied up with the, the leather trade. And so shoemakers, cloggers, saddlers,
from miles around, I suppose as far as a horse would do in a day, 20 miles or so, would come to buy leather. And so these Nelson brothers would be familiar with Settle, having travelled here buying leather. This is the only bit of local leather I can show you, which is a clog with leather that stand in Settle. And that could be 80, 90 years old. Of course, when it was new, it would be as supple as this is. But it, it's, it's got very hard because it, it's old. But that's settled down leather on a, on a clog. Might I say, at that period, a clogger made clogs. He made the soles, he closed the uppers, he made clogs. Didn't make any, any boots and shoes. A shoemaker didn't make clogs. In the same way, there were saddlers would stitch horse leathers, saddles, bridles, whatsoever. But if somebody came in with his boot wanting it stitching, he said, say, take it to the shoemakers. But not now. We stitch anything, uh, be it travel cases, motorcycle leathers, harness, although there are two girls in the area now that have set up repairing harness, making harness. Uh, a lot of their work is in New Zealand rugs and such like. But one comes sometimes with a bit of leather that's a bit thicker than she, she wants to stitch. But that's how it, it used to be. People kept strictly to their, their own trades. Blacksmiths work whitesmiths, well, do you see? Simple as that. This prosperity of that day attracted all the businesses. There was a, a bank set up in Settle. It's now Bartley's Bank, but it was then the Craven Bank. They had their own bank notes with a cow on one side and Castleburg Rock, that's the rock up there, picture of that on, on, on the other side. Uh, and until a few years on, an act of parliament said no, the bank notes were all Bank of England, they, they continued trading with their own bank notes. The bank manager lived next door to the bank, put a big building up there, house with extensive gardens. It's now social club, it was a, an hotel for years. Another banker, he built what is Cragdale, a, immediately across the road from the shop here, that big house with the tree in front. Uh, John Pert was his name. He, he was a banker and they, they built these houses on the new turnpike road and so forth as you go out the Falcon Hotel, that was built on the new Turnpike Road, was Ingfield Hall. Further on, Anley. Anley Hall Nursing Home, built on this new Turnpike Road. Uh, Anley, of course, originated pre Doomsday Book, it's mentioned there. Anley having, having its own mill. But anyhow, we won't talk about mills. The only mill we are concerned was the, a bark mill at the oh. tan yard. And that was a horse mill. The horse walked round and round, grinding the bark which was used in, in tanning. And the bill heads 
of that tannery, which was the last operated in Settle, used to have a picture of this horse mill on. My school days, Monday morning, very often school holidays, I'd go with my father buying leather. And of those days, they done, done away with the horse mill and they had an engine, uh, a paraffin engine it to be. And I did strict instructions, keep away from this engine. And there was a big wooden barrel and the tanner scraped the back of the hides, uh, what we call fleshing now, cleaning the backs off took the grease out and all the grease out of the hide went into this tub and that was dubbing and my job we'd have what we would call a paint can now a, wire, a can with a wire handle on to fill with dubbing with a trowel out of this barrel and my father had said to me don't get any on your jersey I can hear him now. Don't get any on your jersey now. Just slamming this grease into this tin can. Now then, that was just what came out of the hides. And always in the workshop we had this this tin with dubbing in. And all the workbooks, clogs and so forth, which never got any treatment at home, if they'd been repaired, they'd have a good brush round with an old shaving brush we're, we're dubbing out of this can. And what we were doing, we're putting back the grease into the leather, which had dried out, washed out. The grease the good lot put into the hide in the first place. Can't do better than that. And now you get a little tin, and it costs about two pounds. And the other Put it in the shovel for us. Would you like to talk a bit about the customers and what kind of products, how the products have changed over the years? Products? Yeah, the boots that well, you've been making. I was saying that these big houses were built, wealthy families, business people, um, that came to live around here. They all had their own stables, their horses, carriages, and their own staff. Now then, Titus Nelson specialised in livery boots, livery being the the dress of the coachman, the driver. And so this is what they made, what he was really wanting to specialise in. A, a coachman's boot, what they call a livery boot. And they were recognised, the different households, by the colour of the top band different colours, it's 